Welcome back to Battle Lore Second Edition. This is the Dakon Turn 4. And so without further ado, we'll get right into it. It is the command card uh, step. And the first command card, the command card we're going to play for the Dakon is called Line Advance. It's one on the left, one in the center, one in the right. And now uh, I'm going to use, of course, the mini dice to uh, decide which units I'm going to activate. And I'm also, now that it is the order phase, um, and the Dakon have a whole pile, they have 11 lore to spend, I'm going to use Crushing Blow. It says, play during your order step, which will be now order one Ruin Golem unit, in addition to the orders provided by your command card. Add three dice to each of the Ruin Golem's command or combat rolls this turn. So we're going to send in the Crushing Golems. All right, I think I can do the activations from here. So the one on the left will be the Citadel Guards. The uh, Golems from Crushing Blow will be the ones sitting on the victory point marker. And the unit from the center that I'm going to activate is going to be uh, a Rock Warrior. He's in the center. And the unit down below, uh, I guess you can't quite see it here, is a Citadel Guard. Uh, over here, and that's going to be uh, our third unit on the right. Okay, let me zoom in then, and we will do some movements, and then after that we will have the attack step. Okay, so here, to play the Crushing Blow lore card, it is a cost of 5, and so we're going to take 5 from the 11 lore, and we're going to spend that to play that card. And now it is the move step, and golems can move too. So I'm going to have them go one, two, over to this spot, and we'll move the die with them. And we're going to have the citadel guards now are actually going to move out of the forest, and they're going to move onto the victory point marker here, so that we can claim it again. The end, and I'm removing their die. They will not be able to attack anybody. Okay, I'm going to move over to the other side of the board, do the movement there, and then we'll come back and do the attacks. Okay, so for the movement step here, I'm going to have the Rock Warrior. And let's just take a look at the Rock Warrior card. I don't think we've looked at that one in detail yet. It has a movement of three. Uh, it has four attack dice and four life points. And it has something called Mobility 2. It says if this unit was ordered, it may move up to two hexes after your attack step. And Flying. Melee units roll one fewer die during combat rolls against this unit. This unit ignores combat and movement restrictions of hexes it moves into or occupies. So because it's a flying unit, it can basically go where it likes. It has movement of three. So I'm actually only going to move it one, two. It'll be right here. And our Citadel guards right here are, can move two, and they're going to go one, two. So they're going to put a squeeze on the obscene units here. And now we're going to get right into the attack phase. And I'm going to use the Rock Warrior attack first against the obscene. And the Rock Warrior gets four attack dice. So we're going to go ahead and roll those. And it gets... Uh, one attack, one retreat, a heroic ability, and a single sword icon. And it is considered a melee unit. So, um, having a look here, uh, we have two hits. Um, the giant units are always considered strong. They're never considered weak, no matter how much damage they have. So that's going to be one, two damage on the obscene units. And it's going to have one retreat. And if we take a look at the board here, so two hits and one retreat. While the obscene cannot retreat because the Citadel Guards are right behind them, they will lose um, a unit. All right, but now I think the obscene have a special ability of their own. Let's have a look at their card. And their card says down here, Ferocity, during your opponent's attack step, if this unit would be forced to retreat, this unit may counter before it retreats. Uh, this is a little tricky. However, um, I, th I don't think they get to counter because they've been eliminated. They don't actually 
get to retreat. So let me just check the rules on that and come back uh, with a ruling here. Okay, so I'm just going to come back and I'm going to cite uh, in the reference guide under retreats. And it says here, retreating units cannot move off the game board or into a hex containing either impassable terrain uh, or enemy units. A unit that would be forced to retreat into one of these hexes instead ends its movement and suffers one damage for each retreat it could not resolve. So the way I'm reading that is because they cannot resolve that uh, retreat, it must be turned into damage. So their ferocity ability uh, would not come into effect. Anyway, that's how I'm going to rule it uh, reading that. Uh, if it's incorrect or you think that's done incorrectly, please leave a um, comments in the video. Anyway, that's what I'm going to do. These guys have mobility, so they can now move two spaces after um, their attack step. And so uh, this Citadel Guard unit now is not adjacent to anything. It will not get to attack. So we're just going to remove the die there. All right, we have to go to the left echelon and look after our final golem assault. Okay, so up here we have our ruined golems and they already have three attack dice. They're going to be doing a melee attack. And because we played the Crushing Blow lore card, they are going to actually get to add three dice to each of that Ruin Golem's combat roll. So we're going to be rolling a total of six dice for the attack and against the Obscene unit. So let's have a look here and see what we can get. And yes, all kinds of damage. That, of course, is range, does nothing. One, two, three hits immediately. Uh, and one lore gathered. Okay, so three hits is obviously going to completely get rid of them. And we've already looked at the obscene card and it had nothing to do with retreats. They just basically got um, three damage. They're completely eliminated. So as it stands, the Uthic now have absolutely no none of their elite obscene units left. And of course, the uh, golems are going to advance into this space and that was their attack. All right, it was a good turn for the Dakan. So now let's back off and take a look at the victory point score and see how they've done. Okay, so very good turn for the Dakan. We have the Rock Warrior sitting on one victory point. We have the Citadel Guard over here sitting on a second one and the Ruin Golems have captured a third one. And also, because of the startup card for Dakan, we have one, two, three, four units in the center, and the Uthek only have two units. That's going to score them one more victory point. So they're going to get a total of four victory points this turn, uh, and we're just going to go ahead and collect that for them. So that's a very, very excellent turn. So that's going to take them from... So we're going to give them four victory point markers. They're going to now go from eight to... 12 victory points and the Uthic right now are sitting on 13 so they're just one behind. All right we must now collect for them a command card and the command card they get is patrol right and that's two units activating on the right side that goes with their um, cards and because they still have seven lore left um, I think I'm going to go one lore card and one lore token. So that's going to bring them up to eight lore. And the lore card specific for them um, is Portal. And it's cost six lore to play. It says play after your command step. Place two portal tokens on hexes on the game board within eight hexes of each other. Remove both portal tokens after the move step this turn. Hexes containing portal tokens are treated as adjacent for the purposes of unit movement. Ignore terrain effects or hexes containing portal tokens. All right, so they're able to put a magic portal onto the board, and they actually have enough lore to do it next turn. Okay, that is going to conclude the Dakan turn four. They've done extremely well to uh, make a bit of a comeback here. However, the Uthic are still up by one. They're leading 13 to 12 in the victory points. And next turn, we're going to have the Uthic. Uh, it's going to be turn five. All right. 
Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Join me next time when the dwindling Uthuk army will take turn five and see if they might be able to capture um, three victory points to maybe win the game. It's getting close here. We'll find out next time. Thanks for watching. Thank you.